I'm Simon from Weld and Tools. Welcome back to Routing Insights. Today I want to discuss feeds and speeds. These are something that get asked about a lot. Many people ring us up and they say, I've just bought this cutter, what should my feed rate be? I'd like to be able to give you a definitive answer to this question, but the truth is that I can't. All the machines are different, all the materials are different, there's lots of different things that will affect your parameters. So today I'd like to give you some guidance on how you can optimise your feeds and speeds to be getting the perfect finish. Right, so first off, let's talk about speed. Speed is the easiest part of the equation. The, the speed that we're talking about, although we refer to it in RPM, it's actually the speed of the tip of the cutter as it goes past the work. For woodworking, that tip speed is roughly 150 kilometres an hour, but as a rule of thumb, we can say that for any cutter under about 20 millimetres, the RPM will be set to maximum. And in fact, for smaller cutters, like 6 mil, we actually don't get to the optimum tip speed. So just as a rule of thumb, for anything under 20 millimetres, maximum speed. If you're using a bigger cutter and you want to work out the, the speed that the tip is going at, you can use this little formula. Okay, depth of cut. Depth of cut is very important. There is a direct correlation between the depth of cut we use and the tool life. The reason for this is, as an example, so I've got a sheet of 12mm ply to cut and I'm using a 6mm cutter. I really want to be able to cut that in one pass. If I cut it in two passes, I am reducing the life of my tool by 50% straight away. And that is because the end of the cutter does the same amount of work for every pass. And if you do it in two, two passes, you're doubling the amount of work it, it uses to cut, through the, to cut through the material. Often people say to me, I use half diameter. As a, as a rule of thumb for my depth of cut, and that is correct if you're hand routing, but for CNC work where the CNC machine has hold of the router cutter in all the directions, you, you can use t two times the diameter for that depth of cut. So for a six millimeter cutter, that will cut through 12 millimeter plywood all in one pass. If you've got a very strong stiff machine, you might even be able to improve on that, but as a rule of thumb to start with, it's a good place to start. Now, when we're talking about depth of cut, we must also talk about vibration. The biggest killer of cutters and CNC machines is vibration. And the, we've all heard the noise. We, we hear the noise when the apprentice is downstairs with a router and we hear it go, yeah, as, it, as he plunges into the work. So we know what vibration sounds like, but what it actually is, is the cutter bending. The noise that you can hear is the cutter bending and then, the vi and then going off balance. And if you keep allowing a cutter to vibrate, it will break it. And it will break it reasonably quickly. It's a bit like a metal coat hanger, keep bending it and it'll snap. So it's important that we avoid vibration. The instinctive thing that we do to reduce vibration is turn down the feed rate. But I think it's better not to do that. It's much better to reduce the depth of cut because the vibration is caused by excess load on the cutter. If you reduce the depth of cut to reduce the vibration, the vibration will disappear altogether. If you reduce the, if you reduce the feed rate, there is a likelihood that the tip will create a chip and then the next tip coming round will recut that chip and that will put the heat that would have been expelled with the chip back into the cutter and cause the cutter to overheat, cause build up in the cutter and all kinds of other problems. So it's important that to reduce vibration, to start with at least, is you reduce your depth of cut. Easiest way to re reduce vibration. When setting the feed rate, I generally, as a rule of thumb, starting place, I consider the diameter of the cutter to be roughly what the feed rate will be. So if you've got an 8mm cutter, it'll be about 8mm a minute. For a 6mm cutter, about 6mm a minute. Now this is a good starting place. It's not the definitive answer to the question that you're looking for, but as I discussed earlier, there isn't a definitive answer to that question, but we do need somewhere to start testing. 
So we estimate the the we've estimated the feed rate, we've calculated the speed, and we've calculated our depth of cut. The next thing that we want to do is to put the cutter in the machine, program a, a short toolpath for testing, and then run that toolpath. Now, when we initially run that toolpath, we're listening carefully to see if there's any vibration. Most of the vibration that you'll hear is as it goes around the corner, the, the uh, load on the tool will increase and that's where you'll hear a vibration. If you're suffering with vibration, you need to reduce your depth of cut. Sometimes if you've only got a very small amount of vibration and you're struggling to get rid of it, reducing or increasing the spindle speed sometimes gets you away from that harmonic. Um, it's worth bearing in mind, but that is as you're kind of finalising your toolpath and optimising it. To start with, don't worry about that, reduce the depth of cut, leave everything else alone. As soon as you've got rid of the vibration, if you had any to start with, we can now try to optimise the feed rate and you can turn it up and turn it down until you hear that you're kind of at the sweet spot. Um, um, as woodworkers we know what that sounds like so I don't need to really explain that you're just listening for the spot where it sounds the nicest. Once you've achieved that you might be able to increase your depth of cut again but, again, but listen for the vibration, don't let it vibrate, vibration kills everything. Okay that's my approach when I have a new tool that I've got no idea how it works. Those are my starting parameters and that's what I do for my initial testing. You can, if you're running a big job where you're cutting loads of sheets of something, you can further optimise your feeds and speeds by keeping an eye on how many sheets or how many components you get out, you get in terms of tool life. And then you can try going a little bit faster, and if it improves, you can go a little bit faster. But obviously, if it, if it doesn't improve, if it gets worse, you might try going a little slower and seeing if it improves. And then you can further optimise your tool life. I do recommend that when you're using the same cutter a lot, once you've found what you think are the optimum feeds and speeds, that you write it down and come back to that. It might be that it changes when you change you get differences in plywood and MDF. It might be that it changes slightly and you, you, you need to do it again. So you should always consider your feeds and speeds and, and always consider that you might be able to improve on them. Okay, I hope you find that interesting. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Thank you very much for watching.